Hi, it's me again, Chelsea Coriel with Design for a Living. I just thought I'd give you this little bonus video to go along with your free ebook, The Seven Secrets to a Six-Figure Design Business, because I wanna make sure that I cover all of the topics very clearly. I really want this to work for you. If you love design, if this is your passion, and it probably is if you found me on uh, YouTube or on my website, that I want you to have the same opportunities that I've had and that other designers have had. I want you to learn how to take this hobby and make it a career. So this short video and the ebook, it's not gonna tell you everything you need to know to start a design business. But I am going to hit the highlights. I am gonna hit the parts that will make or break you. These are the secrets to successful designers. All of the designers that I've worked with around the world, these are the key points that if you can remember these, really process it, it's going to set you ahead of your competition. So number one, starting out very, very simple, come up with a plan, right? Well, you might not know it, but as a designer, there are so many things that you need to ask yourself and you really need to hammer out before you even take your first client. Because if you try to be everything to everyone, you're just gonna be mediocre at everything. I want you to really focus on the things that you're good at. I want you to focus on who it is you really wanna work with. I want you to really hone in on your talent and your skill. That's the way you set yourself apart and you can make a bigger splash in the design world. So starting really with the basics, start with the name you wanna call your business, who you want to serve, uh, what areas of town you wanna to work in, dream about the kind of projects you wanna work on. Um, do you wanna do window treatments? Do you wanna do staging? Do you wanna do redesign, um, historical renovation? I mean, whatever it is, I'm challenging you to put it down on paper. Start taking that dream and the wish and the hope and commit to it, put it down on paper and make a plan for your new business. And then we'll just start following it step by step. You've gotta have that plan right off the bat. All right, number two, keep it simple. <laughs> I could just stop there. No, what I mean by that is, you know, I hear a lot of excuses. I hear, well, as soon as my website's finished, or as soon as I finish design school, or as soon as I take more classes, or as soon as I've saved up enough money to completely quit my other job and start this whole new career from scratch. At the end of the day, those are just excuses. What you really need, if you want to design for a living, you need a name for your business, you need a great business card, you need your cell phone, and you do need a tax or resale number. And that's just part of the industry. That's just tells the design world, hey, I'm serious about this. I've jumped through hoops and paid the 35 or $45 to get my tax ID number so that I am a professional. So that if I do want to go open accounts at a design center, I, I am truly legit as a designer. I take this seriously and I will uh, mark things up. I'm going to collect a little commission. I'm going to pay my taxes. So it, even if you don't do that side of design, just having it will show the rest of the design world that you mean business. So it's just that simple. Don't overthink it. You don't have to have a website to start designing. You don't have to have a degree to start designing. In fact, most of the famous designers you hear about do not have a degree in design. They just had a really uh, a great knack for working with people, uh, a really good sense of problem solving, and of course, great taste. And they just wanted to get out there and express themselves creatively and help people. That's what being a designer is. So quit making excuses. Create that plan and then just go for it. Whether it's part-time, whether it's full-time, whether you're doing this on weekends or in the evenings, you can do this, but quit making excuses and quit overthinking it. Just keep it simple. All right. Number three, this is a little controversial only because uh, I've taught this over and over because it's what I live. It's because the way, it's the way I run my business, it's the way I teach to run a design business and hundreds of designers that, that have followed me written back and said, oh, I didn't, I was afraid of that, but I trusted you and I did it. They end up doubling their client list. My, my big secret is you don't need to charge when you first go out to meet someone. Now, I'm gonna say it a hundred times, do not design for free. But the way I do it, I don't design at my first house call. To me, that's almost like marketing. I need to get in, I need to see the space, I need to see if we're a good fit. 
I need to see if they're really serious about hiring a designer. There's so many questions that I have for them that I need to get in this space, look at my eye, sit them down, talk business, and see if they really want to work with me. Otherwise, you're gonna end up you know, wandering around their house, giving them free advice, and they're just gonna steal your ideas. So that's a really big problem in the design industry. But it all comes down to that first house call. If you don't charge for that first house call, but you think of it more as a fact-finding mission, that you're there to kind of investigate and see what this project is about and see if you really wanna work with this person, you don't need to charge for that hour of your time, but you're also not giving them your design talent. What you are giving them is confidence. You're giving them assurance that you can help. You're giving them the, that, that idea that, you know, designing, working with a designer can be fun. It's not as crazy as I thought. It's not as scary. This person isn't judging me. They're just here to help. All of that's gonna unfold at that first house call if you do it right. So you don't have to try to make your money at that first house call. If you do, you'll end up scaring away clients and I, I promise you, I have been called many times where they say, well, gosh, the other designers charge for this. How come you don't? Why would I charge? I'm not, I'm not designing for you yet. We need to see if this is good, a good fit. So one little tip, trust me on this, push the I believe button, and it'll make a big difference in your business. Okay, the next secret and tip that I really want to stress, because again, I see one of the biggest problems uh, struggling designers have is that they're chasing clients. They'll take anyone. Well, I'll be honest, not everyone is ready to work with a designer. We are kind of a luxury item, all right? Not everyone has a personal shopper. Not everyone, um, you know, has a home chef. Not, you are there to help them with their home, but, but it's not for everyone. So I want you to do this for me. Right there next to your plan, I want you to describe your ideal client. Do they have kids? Are they a busy professional that doesn't have time to shop? Um, are they someone that just bought their first dream home and they want to completely renovate this, this older home? I mean, whatever it is, whatever you want that person to be, write it down. Are they laid back? Are they to the point and business-like? Uh, you know, whatever that is, write it down. Then I want you to think about what size projects you want to work on. So if you're just starting out, you might be afraid to tackle a kitchen or to knock down walls, and that's okay. You'll get there. But think about the projects that you want to work on. And here's a really big tip. Most people are under the impression that they have to spend a lot of money to get a beautiful house. And we know that's just not true. In today's market, there's great furniture everywhere. There's affordable furniture everywhere. Great design is all around us. With that in mind, you don't have to go after these mansions to make an amazing living as a designer. I myself have earned six-figure income just working with slightly upper middle class families. So someone that, you know, here in Seattle might make 200,000. Um, other places I've lived, Texas, they might make 100,000. But it's that family, that's who I like to work with. There's our um, smaller families, younger kids that are kind of laid back and they usually want a, a family room where they can relax and watch movies. They usually want some small kind of room where they can entertain. Or, I love working with those families. So that's who I attract. That's who I go after. Those are my ideal clients. And I'm telling you, it doesn't take many of them to build a great business because they'll ask you to help with each room. Then they'll say, oh, my mother would love you. They'll say, my neighbor, oh my gosh, she needs your help. And it will snowball so quickly. You're, you don't have to have this huge client list of mega rich people. They tend to be a bigger pain in the butt than, than um, you know, a little bit more laid back clients. So you wanna make great money and still keep your sanity. Trust me on this. Okay, the next really important tip, and this might, um, this is on the top three list. You need to control the entire process from the very first moment. I'm asking you that when they first call and say, hi, I found you on, on um, the internet and I'd like to ask you about design. How does that work? And how does your services work? Even on your website, you need to remain in control. That means I don't give them my pricing on the phone. 
because I haven't seen their, their house yet. What if they're hoarders? And it's gonna be 10 times more work than they imagined. I'm not gonna give them a price on my, my website or, or on the phone because I might get there and think, ugh, what did I do? Then you resent them and it becomes this whole negative experience. You'll just feel like they're taking advantage of you. When you get to their house, don't let them drag you around, showing you every, every little spot they have questions about or everything they've made a mistake on. That's not why you're there. Remember, this first house call is for you to gather information and decide if you want to work with this person, if, if this is a great project, if it's a good fit for you. So you need to be in control. I'm not saying you be bossy, but when you get there, you just explain, all right, like I said on the phone, Mrs. Jones, today is all gonna be about gathering information. I'll take pictures and, and measurements. I really wanna get to know you to see what, what your dream room looks like. So let's get started. Show me the area that you wanna work on first. See, right there, it's, it's very simple. I told her how long I'm gonna be there. I told her what I'm gonna be doing, what to expect, and that we need to get to the point and what we're gonna be working on. It's little things like that that it's just a way of controlling the project and the expectations. And in the end, they're going to love you so much more because people don't like being surprised. People want to know what to expect. They're going to respect you as a professional. They can't take advantage of you and just get some free ideas and go shop, right? They know that you mean business. You are someone that's there to help and you're going to take their project seriously. So the more you can control the situation, control their responses, control the pricing, control your presentation, control the delivery, control all of that, the happier you and your client will be in the end, I promise you. All right, I have to say this is probably the biggest mistake I see designers make, all right? This is number six, and I can't say it enough. I say it a thousand times. I've said it every way I can, can imagine. You need to design for your client and not for you. Being a designer at the end of the day really is about helping people. Someone calls you because they're struggling and they want a beautiful home and they just can't do it. They know that you've got good taste, you offer the service, so they call you to come over. They have an idea in their mind. It could be the ugliest thing you've ever seen. They could want purple walls and red sofas, but that's why they hired you. It's your job to give them a beautiful room, whatever that means to them. I cannot tell you how many designers I've talked to and how many clients I've talked to that said their designers just didn't listen. My favorite example is a, a client that I went to for the first time down in Southern California in one of the wealthiest neighborhoods, uh, Rancho Santa Fe. It's right outside of La Jolla in San Diego. Beautiful, multi-million dollar mansions everywhere. So this was a good job. This was a nice, laid back, retired couple, very easy to work with. And after that first house call, and I've gone through my 45 minute spiel and we're sitting down to sign contracts, they said, uh, you know, you're the third designer that we've had. And I thought, Red flag, ding, 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 ding. Why, why, why have you had three designers and either fired them all or they quit? Well, it turns out no one would listen to them. They said, listen, we know this house is old and we're gonna sell it in two years. We already have equity built in. We don't need to do more to fix this house. It already will pay for itself. So I don't need the back bathroom remodeled. I don't want you know, all of the woodwork ripped out. I just want these few rooms fixed and I want it to look pretty. Done, I, that was great. I profited about 12,000 off of that job because I just did what they asked. I gave them their dream space. That's why they hired me and they loved it. So please, I know you may, you may hear this advice now and be, oh, sure, sure. But when you're in the design, you're going to try to push their budget. You're going to try to push their style. You're going to try to to make them something that they're not, and they're not going to feel comfortable with it. I heard a design professor once say, if you can improve someone's taste by 10%, you've done your job. So really, this is about making people happy. That's the secret to being a successful designer. So stick with that and I promise you, you'll have so many clients knocking down your door you won't know what to do with. I used to have waiting lists of clients. In fact, now I, I only pick three or four clients a year because I can, <laughs> I can choose the projects that I wanna work on. 
All right, the final piece of advice. I like to make design an experience. I think about any situation I've I've been to, whether it's you know going to Nordstrom's versus TJ Maxx, or it was buying my luxury car versus when we went and and shopped for used cars. When you're buying a luxury item, which again designers are a luxury item, when you're buying a luxury item, you expect to be pampered a little. So I talk to designers who say, well, I'm not going to sketch. You know, I might do a. a CAD drawing or I might do a floor plan. I'm not going to do a board. Why would you do a, a display board? No one does that anymore. I'll tell you, you're right. Not many designers do it, but it sure sets me apart. The way I do it is really simple. I've got a cork board. The way I wrap the fabrics, it's not this huge, expensive, tiresome thing that it used to be back in design school when I learned. It's very simple, but it sure makes a statement. I set it up. I present their entire design, their whole house cohesively. I walk them through each decision I've made. I really make it an experience. They can touch it. They, they can see how everything flows together. It's much more of um, an impressive demonstration and think, oh, this is why I pay the big bucks for a designer. This is what I want. I want to be pampered. I want to be presented to. And then when you finally get in to install your design, which is awesome. That's like the best part. You see the look on their face. I don't let them stay in the house. I usually say you don't want to receive, you don't want to see sausage being made. It's just really delicious. I make them go away and I unwrap all the furniture and I fluff the pillows and I spend, you know, I might move a sofa 8,000 times before I get just the right spot and just the right karate chop. And um, then I put fresh plants and I'll arrange their pictures and I'll light some candles and always have fresh flowers, always, always, always. And then you invite them back in, give them a time and you're gonna be done and you text them, you let them know, and they walk in and it's so exciting. That's the icing on the cake. I'm telling you, they're not gonna nitpick little things. They're not gonna say, oh, is that a scratch on the leg of that chair? Wait, they're not gonna notice. They're gonna be blown away by their room and how hard you worked and this beautiful space. They're gonna love you. These little, these little extra things that you do that set you apart from your competition will give you a name in your community. I, you know, I used to have the newspapers calling me when I lived in small towns. Um, I was the go-to designer in my town. I had a name for myself because I really, I made it an experience working with me. So that's the kind of thing that, that will set you apart. That's the difference between success and failure as a designer. They might seem simple, but at the end of the day, this is what makes you money as a designer. And if you don't want to make money as a designer, that's fine. You can keep designing your mom's house and designing your own house and helping your friends. But if you really want to make this a career, if you want to stop the soul crushing desk job or you know the computer job where you're sitting in a cubicle, if you love interior design, and you really want to make a go at this, you really want this to be your career, just like you see on TV and just like you, you, know, you dreamt about you see in magazines, you absolutely can do this. I can help you. I've been doing this for so long. I graduated from design school in 92, but I started working at a design firm in 91. I've worked on hundreds and hundreds of houses. Then I fell in love with mentoring and coaching when I was managing design studios. And I learned that these young designers were coming out of design school not knowing how to really be a designer. They learned CAD and they, they learned you know, SketchUp and they learned how to put together fabrics and things, but they didn't actually learn how to be a designer. How to make your clients happy, how to find clients, how to charge, how do you price for your services. Those are the kinds of things that I want to share. I want to pull back that curtain and unveil the truth about what it's like to be a designer. I'll tell you straight what to be careful for, otherwise you'll end up with a nightmare client. I'll tell you exactly how to make multiple income streams so that you can make even more money on each project rather than having to go chase each client trying to just find one and two here. Who will hire me? Who will hire me? That's not the way I do it. That's not the way I teach. All right, this is a real business. I'm gonna teach you how to start your design business. It'll be a career. Now, whether that's part-time or full-time, it doesn't matter. 
whatever that means to you, you have freedom. You set your schedule. You can work out of your home. I always have. I love it. I love being able to be involved in my kids' school. I love that I have lunch here. My husband comes home for lunch. I love that if I don't want to work one day, I don't have to. That's the kind of life that I want for you. And I still make great money because I have a gift. I can make a pretty room for someone. If they tell me what they want, I can give them a beautiful room. If you can do that same thing, then come join me. Come be a part of the Design Success Studio. I have two major programs, my Interior Design Success Studio, which teaches you those basics, what to say at the house call, how to conduct that, how to go through um, and create a good design quickly, fast, so that your clients love it, how to present, all of those things for the business. And then my certification program's even greater because I took all of the stuff that I did learn at design school that I ever used, like just my favorite parts of furniture history that are actually relevant. Just the parts of color theory that I actually use in my business. All of those little details, how to sketch and create a rendering, um, even down to walking through a first house call behind me. I have a camera follow me <laughs> through a very first house call. You see exactly how I do it with a real client, getting a real deposit. This is someone I'd never met before. They just called. It was a referral, friend of a friend. But you'll get to see all of that in action. Because at the end of the day, I want you to have the same joy that I have. I want you to design for a living. I know you can do this if this is your passion and you want to make a career out of it. I'm happy to help. I love it. I'm thrilled. Click down below. Take a look. See what it's all about. The Interior Design Success Studio and my certification course where you are actually a certified interior design professional. Put that on your card, put that on your website. You are a certified interior design professional. All of that, are, it's what I teach, it's what I love, it's what I'm passionate about. Thanks for being here and happy designing.